York, but not as you know it. Walking down Fifth Avenue, you look up to the Manhattan skyline, but instead of seeing stars, you see only the twinkling lights of the Midtown Dome. Welcome to an alternative cyberpunk New York that never happened. Back in the 1960s, an architect named Buckminster Fuller proposed building a massive geodesic dome over Midtown Manhattan, which would have completely transformed the skyline of New York City. Today, we're going to explore the history behind this plan and why it ultimately failed. The proposed plan was to cover Midtown Manhattan with a massive geodesic dome. It would have been tall enough for the biggest skyscrapers and wide enough that most of central New York would have lived under its lofty borders. This dome would have been made out of lightweight materials, been transparent, and it would have covered an area of over 17 square miles, from the East River to the Hudson River, from 21st Street to 64th Street. The idea behind the dome was to create a climate-controlled environment that would protect the city from the harsh New York winters and summers. The dome would have been supported by a network of cables and steel beams, and it would have been anchored to the ground by massive concrete pillars. And we mean truly massive here. Each one would have been the size of the Statue of Liberty and would have been located out in the river and the bay. The dome would have been 200 feet tall at its highest point, and it would have covered some of the most iconic buildings in New York City, including the Empire State Building and Rockefeller Center, at the time, some of the tallest buildings in the world. Ironically, it seems that the economics of this dome made more sense the bigger it was. Hence, the size was considered conservative, with additional ideas floated for other parts of New York. The dome itself would have its own internal climate that would have been controllable, allowing the powers that be to make it rain or shine inside, and generate electricity from the sheer amount of air convection inside, powering the city indefinitely for the future. When it rained outside, vast gutters would capture the downpour and channel the liquid to a vast holding reservoir under Central Park. This means unlimited fresh water and no more water shortages that were common in the 1960s in New York. And boy, you know this idea generated a lot of buzz in the 1960s. In true 1960s sci-fi frenzy, people were fascinated by the idea of a dome covering Manhattan, and many saw it as a way to protect the city from the elements, while also creating a futuristic New York for New York. A retro Fallout-esque cyberpunk look that honestly, I'm quite jealous of. Welcome to the world of tomorrow! So, how did we get here? Well, we need to start with the somewhat crackpot somewhat eccentric inventor of the idea, Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller was a visionary inventor, architect, and philosopher who left an indelible mark on the 20th century. Born in 1895 in Milton, Massachusetts, he had a fascinating life that spanned multiple disciplines, but he's perhaps best known for his work in architecture and design, particularly the geodesic dome. This thunderdome was a lightweight structure made from interconnected triangles that's incredibly strong and energy efficient. He believed that this type of structure could be used to solve some of the world's most pressing problems, like housing shortages and environmental issues. You know what else has housing shortages and environmental issues? The Big Apple. As Buckminster said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. This quote encapsulates his philosophy of using innovation and design to create a better world, a world that included a better New York. Teaming up with Shoji Sadao, the pair claimed that a dome would reduce energy expenditure of the city to 20%, as well as the aforementioned issues of storms and housing. As for the cost, Fuller said that 
the cost of snow removal in New York City would pay for the dome in 10 years. The only thing was to casually figure out the material science and construction could begin right away. As part of the pitch for this project, Buckminster Fuller and architect Shoji Sadao collaborated on designing the massive Montreal Biosphere, which served as the U.S. pavilion at Expo 67 in Montreal. The concept was proven. It would work, and New York was ready to change in a big way. The concept inspired the science fiction writer Ben Bova's story, Manhattan Dome, in the September 1968 issue of Amazing Stories, subsequently expanded into the 1976 novella City of Darkness. A fuller dome over Manhattan also appeared in John Brunner's 1968 novel Stand on Zanzibar. However, and I bet you didn't see this coming, the plan ultimately failed for a number of reasons. One of the biggest challenges was the cost of the project. It was estimated that building the dome would have cost over $3 billion, which was an astronomical sum of money at the time. I shudder to think how many trillions that would be today. Additionally, there were concerns about how the dome would affect air traffic in and out of New York City, and some people worried that it would be a fire hazard. And to be fair, Fuller himself knew this. He remarked to press later. It would be very worthwhile to have cities under geodesic domes, but New York City, if you think about all the different owners of different lands, the controversy about this in my air rights, I don't want a thing over my thing here, I just don't think it's going to happen with New York City. Buckminster Fuller's plan to cover Midtown Manhattan with a massive geodesic dome was never realized thanks to its insane cost and even more insane base concept. But it remains a fascinating footnote in the history of New York City and a reminder of how architects and visionaries have always pushed the boundaries of what's possible. Like what they had in mind for the Tokyo Pyramid. Interestingly, a comparable idea is being implemented in the construction of the Mall of the World in Dubai where the entire structure, spanning 8 million square feet, will be enclosed in glass, creating a climate-controlled environment that can counter the extreme heat during the hottest months of the year. But I won't end this video on that note, but rather how Buckminster would go on to use his ideas for a floating city, a video I'll have right here on the channel very soon. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss it.